Look, I know I'm a little late, but between the slush and the rush hour traffic out there, I, uh, I couldn't help it. Don't worry about it. Looks like we'll have time to have a drink before we get started working. We don't have a quorum yet. Oh, I wasn't sure if you were expecting Monica to be here tonight. I was, but uh, she left here half an hour ago. She hasn't come back yet. What can I offer you? A oh, light scotch should be fine. I assume that Monica would be here because it's so important to her. Yes, I know. That's why it was so surprising that she uh, left here without telling me where she was going. And then she's late for the meeting on top of it. Thank you. You know, it's not like Monica to not be around when we're talking plans about the new cardiac link. Maybe she really is changing more than I've given her credit for. Rick, I'm very much aware of the uh, friction between you and Monica. Well, I'm sure you are. You'd have to be blind not to be. So far as the Hardwick Foundation is concerned, this project is carrying my name on it. Well, I'm aware of that, too. I don't intend to allow any petty conflicts of personality to jeopardize either my name or this project. Well, I don't intend to allow that to happen, either. This is far too important to the people of Port Charles. Then I assume that you're willing to give Monica a chance to show that uh, she can deal with the friction as well as you can. I think she deserves it. Alan, please understand this right off the bat. As a doctor, Monica has my complete respect. She always has. And as a human being or a woman? Monica has certain personality traits that have stood in the way of her success. I think that she's bright enough to recognize them, and well, I hope she can overcome them. If that's a vote of confidence, I'd hate to have you voting against me. All right, Alan, Rick, uh, I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm not going to be able to be a part of the meeting tonight. Excuse me. Hello? Anybody home? The two women in your life. How All did right. your meeting go? Well, we got a lot of work done, but it took a lot longer than I thought. Uh, well, a note for me with my name on it. A hopeful little note saying we were at the floating rib in case you got back in time to join us. Mm-hmm. How did it go? It, uh, did you make some headway? No, I'm afraid not. In fact, our mother-daughter dinner was a minor disaster. Well, Leslie, what happened? Did Laura start blaming you again for depression? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Well, then what was it? Honey, you were so excited about taking her to dinner. Scotty was there. At the floating rib. Uh-huh. With Barbara Spencer, Laura's best friend, and Lee and Gail. Oh, now I see. Must have been just awful for her. We all said hello, and then we went immediately to our table, and she pulled right back into her shell. And she kept insisting that Scotty was ancient history. The words had a very hollow ring. We got home, and she went up into her room, and she's been there ever since. Mm-hmm. Well, shouldn't we do something about it? I was just making some hot chocolate. I thought maybe I could entice her back down here for another try at conversation. Tell you what, suppose you entice me, <laughs> and I, in turn, will entice her, huh? Oh, I'm so glad you're home. <laughs> and I'm so sorry that I'm being the worried mother again, but everything was going so well. I know. I was hopeful, too. Don't talk to her, but be very gentle with her. I think it probably would have been a lot better for her if she'd been able to just burst into tears instead of holding it all in. Oh, oh I can't promise to encourage tears. Uh, weeping women make me very nervous. <laughs> Said. She can't stay up there all night. I'll tell her I made hot chocolate. Maybe she won't refuse that. Oh, here. Honey, she didn't refuse. She wasn't in her room. Well, did you call her? She might have been in the bathroom. No, she wasn't. Look, I don't want to frighten you, but I don't think she's even in the house. Why? Her closet door was open. It was half empty. Oh, no, please. No, let's wait just a little while yet, just until we're sure that she's not coming back tonight. You think she still might? Well, I'm, I'm not very hopeful, but she might. Look, uh, I'm going to take a run upstairs and see if maybe she wrote a note that fell behind the dresser or under the bed or something. That's yeah, probably a good idea. Sure seems like she would have left some sort of word for you. I'm afraid she didn't. But it, it sure won't hurt to look. That won't be too long. Yeah. Let's 
Nothing at all. Not a hint or a clue as to where she might be. Well, uh, uh, maybe I should go upstairs and take a look through her closet and see if I can try and figure out what she took with her. Maybe that would give me some kind of indication of where she... Listen, you'll let oh. me know the minute you hear from her, won't you? Yes, of course we will. Now that we've gotten you all worried, we won't forget to let you know if we hear anything. Yeah, I just wish there was more I could have done. I don't know what it could have been. Thank you. Good night, Dave. I could wring her neck for this. I really could. Yeah, I know how you feel, old buddy. I don't care how unhappy or how upset Laura was. It was inconsiderate and selfish of her to do something like this to Leslie. Yeah, it really was. Somehow, it just doesn't seem like Laura. Yeah, I guess she was more trouble than Leslie and I suspected. Well, you know, sometimes you get all wrapped up in your own happiness. You just don't notice what's going on around you. Especially if it's happening right under your own nose. Yeah, I'm guilty of that, all right. Well, I guess I might as well head on home. Oh, David, I, I appreciate you coming over and doing all the driving around. Hey, listen, I just wish I could have found her for you, that's all. Well, thanks for your help. Hey, listen, any time, any time. I mean, at any time, any hour of the day or night, you name it. Well, I'll remember that offer, and I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, hey, and uh, you guys try and get some rest, huh? I know you probably won't, but... Ah, uh, oh, it's too bad this had to happen. Well, keep the old chin up, huh? the money to run away. Your emergency cash envelope is empty. Look what I found. Where did you get that? In her room, along with a half-empty pack of cigarettes. She's been smoking? I don't know what other conclusion you could draw from it. That's crazy. I mean, doesn't she know how dangerous birth control pills can be when combined with smoking? I don't know. I guess not. Rick, I'm more worried about her than ever. She obviously can't be trusted to take care of herself. She smokes, and she's on birth control pills, and she steals money from us. And she... she... <laughs> Was it the phone? No, no, it wasn't. Now, come on, I want you to sit up and drink this, and I want you to go up to bed and get some rest. Oh, Rick, where is she out all night? Where is she? Look, I don't want to frighten you, but I think it's time that we call the police. We can't put it off any longer. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want them involved. Not if there's even the tiniest chance that she might come back or even call us. Well, we can just check with them and alert them to the fact that she's gone. That way they can let the force know and they can be on the lookout for anybody fitting her description. Oh, all right, whatever you think is best. This is Dr. Weber speaking. Who's calling, please? It's Barbara Vining. Barbara Vining? Yes. We're having tea, but I bet you'd like some coffee. Yes, I'd love some. But listen, what about Laura? Oh, she's safe. Yeah, we were about to call the police, and Barbara Vining called. Barbara Vining? Yeah, Laura went to her. Listen, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, I'll make you some coffee, but wouldn't you like some breakfast? Yeah, how about that? Uh, no, thanks. Okay. Hey, it's been quite a while since we've seen you around here. Yeah. And you know, every time I walk in here, I'm reminded of how much this house means to me. All the memories stashed away in the corners. Well, then come more often. Oh, I feel like I've never left. Yeah, a happy house will do that to you. You know, Mom always used to have everything just right, just right. I think next to us, this home was the most important part of her life. <laughs> you know, I never thought of myself living anywhere else. I mean, the idea never entered my head. Even when I was away in med school, and of course, that, that long spell in Africa, and then that African prison. This is the house I always knew I'd be coming back to. I'm glad one of us is still living here. Well, I always dreamed of coming back, settling down, raising a family. How about you, Jeff? Me? Oh, heck, Rick, I'm still growing up. I think, I hope. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you and Heather. Yeah. Well, that's a tough one to deal with right now. She's thinking about leaving again, Rick. That's one troubled girl you got there. Always on the run. Yeah. She, uh, 
I don't know. She seems driven somehow. Well, does she know what she wants, really? I used to think I knew. She wanted the other side of the hill where the grass was always greener. Now? Now? Now I'm not so sure I know. Nor do I know the real reason she wants to leave this time. Well, you spend all your time with it. You ought to have a clue. Well, it'd just be a shot in the dark, but if I had to explain it, I'd say that well, she's terribly frightened of something. Every once in a while, I, I, I get a look of fear in her eyes. Fear? Of what? That's just it. I don't know. <sighs> Jeff. I wouldn't want to see a replay of that last bit between you and Heather. Oh, uh, Rick, you mustn't be too hard on her for that. And we have coffee for the handsome younger gentleman on the couch. Yay. Yeah. Have you had breakfast? Yeah, sort of. Uh-huh. Why don't you let me fix you something? No, that's really, this is just fine. I just stopped by to find out about Laura. Yes, well, how to grow old gracefully before your time and three easy lessons. At least we know she's safe. I really hate to leave you alone here today, Dawn. It's all right. I've got plenty to do to occupy myself. I've got to remember to call Scotty and tell him he was so worried about her last night. I think maybe I ought to call Bobby, too, don't you? Put it in there, maybe? When they were delivering something? No, no, no. I always keep it locked in there. Well, then I can't see any other explanation. You must have used it for something and forgot about it. Now, come on, honey, sit down and finish your tea. Mm. Boy, I'll tell you, this Corbin business has really got things stirred up at the hospital. Have you noticed? Oh, yes, I certainly have. Has Monica said anything to you about our confrontation the other night? No. She hasn't. Not a specific reference to it anyway, but you know, she was in a strange mood all day yesterday. Edgy and well, nervous like a cat. Maybe, uh, maybe that's the reason. You know, you could have shaken her up when you said you were going to go to Steve. Well, I, I didn't see what else I could do. Well, I don't think there was anything else she can do, and obviously it's working. Monica's going to stay in line as long as she thinks that uh, you're going to go to Steve and attack her on a professional basis. Rick, I don't want to do that unless she forces me to. <sighs> well... I hate to see anything like that happen, because I think that Steve would really come down on her pretty hard, and it could have a serious effect on her career. I don't want Monica punished for what she did. I just want her to stop giving Laura advice in areas that she's not equipped for. Well, I think that Steve would just look at the ethics involved. Prescribing pills for Laura, any minor, well, it was a professional indiscretion, to say the least. You know, Monica said something to me that really kind of struck home, and, um... It still hurts. You gotta expect that from Monica by now. I mean, she's gonna zap you every time she gets a chance. Except there was some truth to it. She said that if I had had any kind of working relationship with my daughter, it wouldn't have been necessary for Laura to go to her. Well, hopefully, anyway, that's all in the past. Laura is coming to me more and more. I'm. I'm so encouraged by the change in attitude. The last couple of days, it's, it's almost as though she's a different girl. Everything is going to be just fine, Leslie. You'll see. Uh-huh. When she comes to me for advice, then I will believe it. Morning, Monica. Uh, good morning. Excuse me. Um, I wonder if I could just impose on your time just a moment longer. It won't take me a minute. Rick, I, I just left a message for you with Dory. Another meeting? Uh, tonight. Uh, unless, of course, you can fit it in sometime during the day. No way. My schedule is crammed full. And as a matter of fact, tonight is out, too. Oh. You must really hate me, depriving you of your husband so much, Leslie. But believe me, it's for a very good... To begin with, Tony's... As our wife, I'll give you exactly 35 minutes. For what? To finish what you're doing and work up an appetite for one of my famous picnic lunches. I'm going to buy the food right now. You are so dear, and I can't go out to lunch today. Well, of course you can. Every hospital employee is entitled to one hour a day in which to sustain himself, or herself, whichever the case may be. So what is it? Um, too many patients or uh, reports? Reports, and I'm up to my ears in them. Well, they can wait. Come here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll 
meet you in the park.